and I realized, like, and then I would start, and I was doing plays, and I just realized that this never happens with plays. You know, you could just write a play, and, you know, if people like it, they'll put it on. Nobody and, asks you to rewrite a character to make somebody more attractive for a client. Right, the notes are, ne like, the notes I get from, like, the, the theater company that produces my stuff are never to make the thing more accessible, you know, to, they're never notes that are kind of geared toward, you know, kind of appeasing a mass quantity of people. They're always notes about making the thing more of what it is. What it is. And so um, it was a much it was a much more enjoyable process, and I found that I was better at it, and I liked it more, and um, could tell kind of stories that I wanted to tell. It would be really hard to do the play I'm doing right now as a movie, because it takes place in an apartment, and it would require just things that I think would hurt the core of the story. Maybe it could be done really well, but I haven't figured that out. Um, does that mean we should expect or might expect one day to see you acting in something you've also written in a, in a movie? That could happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, would, I think I would like to. It just doesn't come as easy to me. I really like playwriting. I want to do like one a year, and I really like that medium. And. Um, yeah, and movies are, it's a different, I mean, like, there are amazing movies that are not commercial, but the movies tend to necessarily require some kind of, you know, just based on the economy, it costs a million dollars to make, like, Holy Rollers, which is kind of a small story, you know, it costs like a million and a half dollars, and it's done cheaply, you know, comparatively. So, you know, it's, the economy of movies tend to require stories that are a little more accessible. Um, let's take a look at the clip from The Squid and the Whale. Raphael, ready for it? I wonder how you're feeling right now. I don't know. Why don't you tell me about something less uncomfortable? Like a nice memory, maybe. Isn't that kind of a stock question for a shrink? Yes. That's more or less how this works. I can't think of anything. Just think. Come on. Just something. Meet me halfway here. Um, let's see. Okay, um... Um, when I was around six, my mom and I, uh, she and I ducked out at Julie Lynn's birthday party to watch Robin Hood together on our TV. That sounds like a nice memory. I like Daryl Flynn. Daryl Flynn. That's all? And I was glad she let me leave the party early to watch the movie. And she and I, she and I loved that movie. It's like, it's like we were pals then, and we'd do things together. You look at the night armor at the Met. A scary fish at the Natural History Museum. I was always afraid of the squid and the whale fighting. I could only look at it with my, my hands in front of my face. When we get home, after my bath, she'd, she'd go through all the different things we saw that day at the museum, and, and we'd get to the squid and the whale, and, and she'd describe it for me. It, which was, it was still scary, but it was less scary. Anyway, it was fun. It was, it was fun to hear about it. Did your dad live at home back then? Yeah, why? You didn't mention him. Where was he during all of this? He was... I don't, I don't know exactly. He was... He was downstairs, maybe. I, he didn't ever come to the museum. This was, this was before my brother was born. It was before... It was, it was earlier. Wow. First of all, I actually it failed to set that scene up. That's a scene, if you've seen the film, where the lead, Jesse Eisenberg character, plays the alter ego for Noah uh, Baumbach's uh, movie based on his own uh, sort of story growing up in Park Slope, Brooklyn in the 1970s. He had just uh, won a, uh, a, a after school music contest or a talent show uh, for songwriting. Uh, no one in the audience, someone probably in the 70s, realized that he had, was singing a Pink, Pink Floyd song uh, and won $110 for that. And they finally discovered it, you know, this became a real issue, and they forced him to go to see his counselor. Uh, and if you could really get away with that in Park Slope, <laughs> uh, nobody knew Pope Pink Floyd. Uh, uh, you know, I'm watching you not watching that. that. That's not easy to do, right? You're not in, Is it hard to watch yourself in movies that you've done before? You don't just throw these DVDs and say, well, I'm going to go watch this one to watch tonight. That, like, never comes up, right? Yeah, no, no. No, it was like a, I mean, let's say, newspaper. 
like Elizabeth Taylor watches Cleopatra in the dark. Um, <laughs> but uh, besides her, no, I don't. I don't know. If people really do. I don't know. It's yeah. I mean, it's strange to see your face from a different angle when you're normally seeing it just in the mirror. You know, so I don't like watching it. Yeah. <laughs> it's also funny because you know you're oftentimes known as having these really the Jufro curls, which you don't have today, uh, but you definitely don't have there, right? They straighten you out there for that thing. It's obviously, and the reason I'm asking this is because I wonder if there is a kind of, I hate to say this because it's like there's a Jesse Eisenberg character. He's brainy, he's socially awkward, uh, he's, uh, you know, fidgety in ways. Uh, and very much in conflict with himself or with his family, sort of running away. Is that, you know, is that a tough thing? You're an actor, you're doing so great, and you're so great at that. And, you know, now we're seeing, uh, you know, Daniel Day Lewis, who, you know, he's Lincoln today. He's something else. I mean, you're a playwright and an actor. Take us through this experience of, you know, sometimes you have a, a, a character locked down, mm -hmm. and you've just got to do you, it better than anyone else. Um, and is that something one wants to have, or one says, look, I'm an actor, there isn't anything I can't play? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, I mean, the way I think of it is like, um, you know, if you can play a part in a movie or a play that has like some depth, uh, it's like winning the lottery, you know, 99% of characters in movies are like kind of, you know, pawns for the plot, you know, they're just to keep the plot going or something like that. So, to get to play a character that has some kind of inner conflict, I don't know, to me, like such an amazingly rare opportunity. So the fact that I've gotten to do a few of those uh, has been great. Um, so, yeah, that's how I, I guess that's how I think of it. No, because I think that's right. Your characters always have a, a rich inner life. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's rare for me. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of a rare thing to be able to do. <coughs> the, the actor playwright thing is interesting to me because the playwright actor is seeming more uncommon than the you know, screenwriter, actor, or actor, director. Now we know George Clooney directs films, and Ben Affleck now, of course, directs films. Mm. Uh, can you think of a way? I was thinking about it before when you said, "Well, it's 